Hey Nerdy Knitters! In this video we're looking at sideways triangle shawls. Shawls that are knit tip to tip, like this one. You start at one edge and you increase until you're as wide as you, or as deep as you want your shawl to be, then you decrease to the other edge. And be sure to stick around because we're going to look at an alternate method for knitting a tip to tip shawl, which takes this construction method and really changes it by increasing along both edges and working a decrease in the center to create sort of a spine. But before we get to that, I just want to say, hey, I'm Tanya here at Nerdy Knitting. I'm a certified knitting instructor and a knitwear designer with the goal of helping you become a confident, adventurous knitter. And I have some free printables that you can download that go along with these shawls that have charts and instructions to cover the basic construction method for each one. You can find the link for that down in the video description box or Google Tanya Knits Resource Library and follow the instructions on that page to gain access to the library and get all of the printables that you'll find and these will be there too. You'll also find timestamp links down below if you want to jump to any point in this video. So let's start with our tip to tip shawl. So here is our tip to tip triangle shawl. It's sort of a crescent shape. You start at one edge and you increase along one side. And then when it's as deep as you want it, you start decreasing down to the other side till you're down to just a few stitches and you bind them off. So you have your neck edge here and then the depth of the shawl is created here. In this sample, I worked increases on every other right side row, so every fourth row. So it's not a very deep shawl, it's fairly narrow. If you wanted a deeper shawl, you could increase along every row, like I did in this shawl here. Every right side row, I would increase until it was the full width I wanted. And I added a border stitch, I knit, knit that as I went along. But that's another way to do it. You can change the rate of increase to change the depth of the shawl. And the pattern is really very simple. We'll start with our setup row. We're going to knit one, work an increase, I'll just use a yarn over, and then knit two. And then we have a decision to make before we work our wrong side row. What kind of body do we want our shawl to have? If we just work in garter stitch, we would knit every row. If we wanted to have a stockinette body, like this one, we have to remember to keep some sort of an edge around it to keep it from curling. So we could work garter stitch, seed stitch, something like that. And this is also where we can make another decision. If we want an even deeper triangle, we could increase on the wrong side row as well. I'm going to skip that for now. We'll just stick with garter stitch. So all we do on our wrong side rows is knit across. So our right side rows will be doing the same thing every right side row. I'm going to knit one, I'm going to increase, and then I'm going to knit to the end. Oops. That's all I'm doing on my right side rows. And the wrong side rows I'm going to knit across. And I'm going to close up that yarn over I used for the increase so I don't have the hole. Here I've worked a few rows so you can see how this is starting to take shape. I'm working increases right along this edge and it's giving us some depth for our shawl body. Now you would keep doing that until it's as deep as you want it, working your increases on the right side rows and working whatever stitch pattern you want along the body of the shawl. And then when it's as deep as you want it, you're going to reverse that. Instead of increasing now, you're going to start decreasing. And I have those instructions here as well. I'm not going to work that, but you can see right there. Once you've reached the depth you want, you would start the decreasing right side rows. Knit one, work a decrease, like a knit two together or an SSK, and then knit to the end, and that would decrease by one. And then you would continue following whatever wrong side row work you were doing. But if you were working increases on your wrong side rows too for a really deep triangle shawl, you would start decreasing on those as well. Now if you wanted to add a stitch pattern right to the body of the shawl, you could add it in here in a chart like this. It's running in this direction across from tip to tip. So you would add your stitch pattern right in there. You could add cables or lace or anything you like. Or you could, like I showed with that pink shawl, you could work an edge border over here and the body of the shawl would remain the same. You'll find some yarn estimates and some tips for variation on this page as well. As you can tell, this tip to tip shawl is not that hard to work. You can make it as deep as you want it by changing the rate of increase and decrease. Now this is a great shawl to do if you have a set amount of yarn and you're not sure how far you can go with it. What you could do is weigh the yarn to see how much it weighs and you would knit the increasing section until you've used about half of it. 
and then you would start your decreasing section to use the other half. So it's really easy to figure that out if you don't have a set amount of yarn. It's also an easy pattern to add a stitch pattern to because you're doing gradual increases along one side. You can do a stitch pattern right along the center or along the top edge without interrupting that or work a border along the outside edge of the increase. So it's easy to make changes to this shawl shape and it's fun to play with. So if you're new to designing or knitting your own shawls without a pattern, this is a good one to start with. Now before we get to the next one, if you have any comments or tips or recommendations or questions about this shawl construction, be sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Now let's look at the other construction method. This is a really popular method that you'll see in a lot of shawls today. You work increases on wrong side and right side rows at both edges and then you also include a decrease line down the middle that cancels out some of those increases. So it keeps the rate of increase the same but it still sort of creates a tip to tip triangle shawl. Here's a rough sample of what this looks like. I didn't block it so it's not really blocked to shape but you can see it's another boomerang style shawl shape. It starts at one edge. You're increasing on right side and wrong side rows right here but then you also do a double decrease down there, down the middle. It creates sort of a spine and it creates this little shape that we get. You can see that comes out of that decrease line. Then when it's as deep as you want it, which I think was right about at this point right here, what you do is you still work your right side rows the same, but then on the wrong side rows you drop one of your increases. I used yarn overs in this case and work them on the other side and that shifts the bulk of the shawl. So you can see all of the stitches, we had the same amount here, but suddenly they're shifting over. We have more stitches on this side than we do on this side. And that happens because we change what's happening with those increases. It's not hard to do, it just seems a little bit confusing. And in this sample it's sort of going in the other direction. It's still the same. We're casting on here, increasing along these edges, decreasing here, and then binding off here. Now with this one we start with three stitches, but our setup rows, instead of just one setup row, we actually have four setup rows to get us started. I'll work the first one. You'll find all the instructions in the printable. Knit one, yarn over, purl one, yarn over, and knit one. That's our first setup row and it's a wrong side row. And then our first setup row for the right side row, we knit one, yarn over, now we're going to work a double decrease. That means we're taking three stitches and turning them into one stitch. In this case, I'm working an SK2P. And all that means is we slip one stitch as if to knit, knit two together, and pass that slip stitch over. And you'll have, I put instructions for that decrease in the printable as well. And then after that, we work a yarn over and we knit one. You can see we had five stitches on our last row, our wrong side row, and we still have five stitches. We worked two increases, but we also worked a double decrease. So we're not actually increasing our stitch count on our right side rows, but we are increasing them on our wrong side rows, like we will see in this next setup row. This is our second setup row for the wrong side. We knit one, yarn over, knit one, purl one, knit one, yarn over and knit one. And now we have seven stitches. We've increased by two. So you can see we are working increases on right side and wrong side rows. And here's our last setup row. We knit one, yarn over, knit one, work that double decrease, slip one, knit two together and pass that slipped stitch over. And now we're going to place a marker there because we're going to keep that central decrease. We're going, where that decrease is located, we want to keep an eye on that. And we knit one, yarn over, and knit our final stitch. So now we've got the setup done. We're going to knit one, yarn over, knit to that marker, slip the marker, purl that stitch. That central stitch is going to stay right there. You can see the whole swatch was worked in garter stitch, but our central stitch was worked in stockinette, so it really stands out. Purl that, 
and then knit to the final stitch, yarn over and knit one. So we are increasing by two stitches on our wrong side rows. I'm going to work that row right now, and then we'll look at the right side row. Okay, I've worked that row, and you can see now I have four stitches. Oh, I have four stitches on one side and five stitches on the other. We've increased two stitches. That is what our, every wrong side row is going to look like for this part of the shawl. And our right side rows, we will knit one, we'll yarn over, knit to that marker, and then we're going to work that decrease there, and then knit to the final stitch, work an increase, and knit one. So let's work that now so we can see how, what's happening with that marker. So we knit one, we yarn over, we're going to knit to two stitches before the marker. And they're all ready. And this is where that decrease is going to happen. So our decrease is slip one, and then we have to knit two together. We can't quite do that with the marker right there. So I'm going to take that marker right off, move that stitch back, knit those two together, slip that over those two stitches, and we have our double decrease. Now I'll put the marker back on right there, just after that decrease. And then we knit to our final stitch, work our increase, and knit the final one. And you just repeat those rows. On the wrong side, you knit, increase, knit to the marker, purl that central line, and then work to the end, working another increase. And you're going to continue doing that until the shawl is as deep as you want it to be. That was about this point right here. So I'm going to work a few more rows and then we'll see what we're going to do from that point. All right, I've worked a few more rows. You can see it's starting to take shape. It looks a bit odd right now. There's that central line. I worked it. You can see how it's a left-leaning decrease in this sample. In the swatch I did, I used a central decrease, so that really stands out. Okay, from once it's as deep as you want, then it's time to change what's happening on the wrong side rows. Your right side rows will remain exactly the same, adding an increased stitch at each end and working a decrease, a central decrease or a double decrease right here in the middle. So our stitch count doesn't change on the front. But what happens on the back is we start dropping yarn overs. And what that does so these two are sort of cancel each other out anyway because of the central one. But now on the wrong side rows, we're going to drop a yarn over here and add one here. So we're, the stitch count remains the same, but our stitches are slowly shifting from being equal to putting them all on one side. Like you can see here, from this point on, we started dropping yarn overs here, but adding one over here. So stitch counts the same. We're just moving all of those stitches over to the other side of this spine. I've worked a, a right side row as normal, but then on the wrong side row, we knit our first stitch. There's that yarn over. We just drop it off the needle, knit to the marker, slip it, purl that decrease stitch. We knit to our final stitch, and on this side, we're going to keep that yarn over from the other row. There it is right there, I'll knit it. And we add a yarn over, and we knit one. And by dropping that yarn over and adding it over here, you can see already, we took a stitch away from here, and we added it over here. So our spine will slowly move, and our stitches will move to one side. And you'll continue doing that until you've moved all of the stitches over. I'll keep working these two rows so you can see how that looks. Okay, I've worked quite a bit more. You can see here from this point to this point, we worked our double increases on both rows, increasing at each edge and decreasing here. Then from that point, we started dropping a yarn over on this side, but still doing the yarn over on that, and that slowly transferred those stitches over. So I've got another wrong side row to work. Knit one, drop that yarn over, and I'm already at the marker. I'm gonna knit across here. And do my final yarn over at the end, and then we'll work that final right side row. Okay, when you're ready, when you come to this point on your shawl and you've just got the one stitch after your marker, this is your final row. You will knit one, yarn over, 
and then knit to two stitches before the marker. And at this point you work that final decrease. So I'll slip one as if to knit, slide that off and drop my marker. Knit those two together, slip that over. And now our spine has moved all the way over here. And then on the next row, we would bind this off. And you can see our boomerang, sort of tip to tip boomerang shawl. <laughs> this one really plays with that construction method though, you can see. And of course, after you're done knitting, you would block it so you could get that point. That would look more like a triangle. As you can see, that's a really interesting construction method for a shawl. It's a little harder to add a stitch pattern to it, but not impossible. But you can add a lot of variety by using different colors or fading techniques or just doing stripes, narrow and large, whatever strikes your fancy. Or work in different stitch patterns like garter or stockinette. You can add some variety. And if you want to look at even more patterns that use these constructions, I'm linking a video right here. This video shows five shawls that use the basic tip to tip method and then five more shawls that use that central decrease line if you're interested in seeing how those shawls take shape. And be sure to leave a comment below if you have any questions or tips or advice regarding this type of shawl. And if you like to get nerdy with your knitting, be sure to subscribe.